What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, Greta's not going to be with us today, so I thought I'd take the opportunity and nerd out on some electrical system stuff. So when we were building this fan, uh, by far the most daunting portion of the build was the electrical system. Um, we, uh, we did so much research and looked up so many different videos and how to uh, connect certain circuits and, and different things and I actually really really love the system we eventually came up with. We ended up taking little bits from, from one video and different from a different tutorial and a different from a blog and I think it worked out really well and so today I want to talk about the four main parts of our electrical system. The solar, um, our batteries, the DC or direct current system, and our inverter and our AC or alternate current system. And so first I'm going to talk about our solar system. And by that, I did not mean the planets that go around our sun. <laughs> um, so this is our solar system, or our solar panel kit. <laughs> um, and if you watched the last video, you knew you know that we got three 100 watt Renogy solar panels and it came in a big kit and it was actually really nice just plug and play um, i'll describe the wiring um, in the in the garage in a little bit later but um, i do want to say that we connected them in parallel there's two ways to connect um, multiple solar panels the first one's in series and in parallel and i'll actually put a link to a really good article um, that describes kind of the benefits of each uh, different type of system but we went with parallel because one we're not running the cables a super long distance, and two, they're more efficient when they're partially shaded. Um, so yeah, we connected it in parallel, and the wires run and go into this box. And inside this box, there's two holes just drilled through the roof, and those wires go through that roof, and then all the way over to what we call, what's the solar charge controller. And these screw-ons uh, make it so it's all waterproof, and we siliconed this box down so it's it's all watertight. Um, but I'll take you down to the solar charge controller and explain the rest of the solar system kit. All right, so the two wires you saw came off the solar panels are these two wires right here. And they come into this, which is the charge controller. Um, and basically what it does is it regulates the voltage and amperage um, to charge your batteries in the best possible way. Um, and so that's regulating that there, and then the two wires coming out of it go down into our batteries to charge those. Um, along with that, we have this uh, Bluetooth device that connects to Renogy's app. And to be honest, it's not the best app, <laughs> but it's nice. Uh, I log on to it frequently to be able to check how much uh, our solar panels are producing in the sun. And so that's been really nice and helpful. And Honestly, like that's the end of our solar system. It's not that complicated. Like I said up top, it's it's a lot of it's just plug and play. And as long as you make sure that um, you know which wire is the positive wire and which wire is the negative wire on the back of this, it, it says what wire goes in what port. And as well as coming off of it, you make sure you know which is the positive and negative for plugging into your batteries. Next is our battery bank, and from watching other videos, you probably already know that we have two 200 amp hour, 12 volt, deep cycle gel batteries. That's a mouthful. Um, but we connected them in parallel, which is basically you connect the negative terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the other battery, and likewise the positive terminal to the positive terminal of the other battery. And because our DC system is 12 volt, which I'll get into a little bit later. We wanted to keep our batteries in 12 volt. And so that's why we connected them in parallel because they maintain the voltage, but together it's an equivalent of a 400 amp hour battery. Along with our batteries themselves, we have a battery isolator that is connected up front near our car battery. And the wire runs from our car battery through the isolator and then all the way over here to this fuse, and then from this fuse into the positive terminal of one of our batteries. And what that does is 
allows it to where whenever our car is turned on, the alternator in the engine is charging both the car battery and these batteries. But then once the car turns off, it disconnects the circuit between these batteries and our car battery. So it doesn't drain one or the other. Um, and that's been really nice. Uh, I'm glad we put this fuse in right here because come to find out we, if we, we tried to run um, our blender while our car was turned on and it tried to pull a lot more energy and so it popped this fuse here, which I'm glad because it didn't fry our whole circuit. So fuses are very good in your electrical system. Moving on from our battery bank, I wanted to talk about our DC circuit. And DC stands for direct current. And I like to think of it as everything that's directly wired into your batteries in a sense. And so basically it's everything you don't plug into a normal outlet. And right now in our van, we have our lights on direct current, our smoke detector, our toilet fan, and our pump for the sink. So basically um, it's pretty simple. We have a positive wire running from one of our batteries to uh, the positive port of our DC circuit box. And this DC circuit box is um, made by Blue Sea Systems, and I'll put a link down below to the exact one we got. It was really nice, and it uses car fuses, and so those are, you can, if, if you ever blow a fuse, you can always just buy one uh, in any convenience store or auto, auto parts store and just plug it right back in. And so, the positive wire goes in, and then we also have our negative wire um, that goes from the negative terminal up over here to the top of our um, circuit box. And this panel comes off really easily, right here. And within it, you have one side that is positive and the other side that is negative. Uh, I'm not gonna go into how you wire everything. Um, there's plenty of videos and other things for you to learn the specifics on that. Um, but basically, yeah, our, our positives go out and then our negatives come back in on this side. Um, we put eye loops on the ends of these and just screwed them into the uh, screws that are in there. And then the fuses just plug in wherever you need them. And then we have an extra one plugged in right here where there's no circuit actually. Before uh, I talk about our last part, which is the inverter and our AC circuit, I wanted to mention wire sizing. Uh, this was something I struggled with as I was trying to build the van because I didn't know how big of a wire I needed for different types of things. And I'm going to put a link down below to a calculator that you put in the number of volts and the number of amps and the distance that your wires are going to be going and it, and it lets you know what gauge of wire you need. Um, just for reference though, the wires I used to connect our batteries in parallel were four gauge wires. Um, which is the same size of wires as that I connected up into our DC circuit box. Um, our inverter, however, came with two gauge wires, which is a lot bigger. And those are what I just used to connect our batteries to the inverter. Um, everything, all the lights were either, t all the lights and other DC things were either 12 or 16 gauge wire. Um, but our sink pump, because it takes a lot more, I had to do 12 gauge wire for it. Um, but yeah, I'll put the link to the calculator and that way you can calculate exactly what size of wires you need for your specific build. All right, so Greta would disagree with me, but in my opinion, this AC system is the most ingenious part of this whole van build. The reason being, and I'm going to try to explain as best as I can, is that we did not wire our AC circuit right here directly into our inverter. And there's a few reasons we did this. So basically, we can just unplug this from our inverter and our all of our outlets lose power. And then we can turn our inverter off and it's not pulling any uh, power from the batteries. And the reason we did this is so that we can connect to offshore power. There's a lot of inverters out there that allow you to um, automatically wire in offshore power. Um, but these, like, if you watched our other video, I think, yeah, we spent just over $300 on this inverter. If we were to get the same um, 2000 watt inverter with a offshore power charger included, I think it puts the price up to around $800. Um, so instead of doing that, um, we made it to where we could unplug our AC circuit and we have this, this no-code port plug over here that goes to the outside of the van and 
allows us to plug in an extension cord um, from the outside of the van. And basically what we do then is we unplug that and plug it directly into this right here. And then our AC circuit is being powered by the extension cord that goes into our friend's house or family's house or whatever it may be. And normally this is kind of scary because if you can, if you ever connect offshore power like this into your inverter, it will blow your battery system. Um, however, because there's only one plug to plug into, into our AC current, it's either in our inverter or in the offshore and that way the offshore and the inverter are never connected together and so it'll never blow our circuit and yeah i really like that part because it saved us hundreds of dollars and honestly it's not that bad that to plug in an extension cord quickly reach over unplug this and plug it into um, this port plug which i will leave a link to this below as well um and so yeah that's kind of like my favorite part of it <laughs> Um, but to go on and explain a little bit more about AC circuits, um, this is a square D breaker box, and I'll include a link below as well, um, with two 15 amp uh, breakers within it. And I'm going to go ahead and open this and kind of show you the wires inside of it. Um, it's a little bit complicated, um, so it might be best to look up some how-to videos specifically on how to wire breaker boxes. Um, but I'll just give you a quick look inside. So this is our breaker box. Um, and when you're dealing with AC, um, instead of just a positive and, and a negative wire, like there are in a direct current, positive and negative, you have three wires, a positive or hot, a negative, and a ground wire. And so basically what I did is I took a piece of an extension cord, cut it, and in each of these extension cords there's three wires, and I took the negative and the ground wire and screwed them into this section right here, which this section is the negative and ground port. And then the hot wire, the positive wire, I led up and screwed it into this piece, which is the positive part of your breaker box. And then we have two circuits here, but I'm only going to explain one of them. So the wire comes in that goes to our outlets um, and it has, again, a positive, a ground, and a negative. And the ground and the negative, the green and the blue, come over here and are wired into the ground and the negative port. And then the black wire actually does not go to this. The black wire goes down and you wire it into this removable breaker. Um, and this acts as essentially as a fuse um, to where if you ever overpower your... Um, your outlets, it will trip the breaker instead of burning out your inverter. And like I said, uh, I would look up some more videos and, and how to's on more specifics, but generally it's pretty simple. You have your ground and your negative, your positive inflow, and then your positive outflow. One last thing before I wrap up the video that I wanted to mention is that we we added an extra precaution level uh, in our wiring. Essentially, um, we knew that there would be a lot more vibration because we're driving around in a van rather than just a stationary home. And so everywhere that our direct current wires pass through metal, we put this like accordion-like plastic sheath over the wires. Um, it's this black stuff right here, some more of it there. And that basically protects the wires from any vibration, especially going through the metal, like I said, because we didn't want um, any of our wires over the years to um, vibrate a cut in them and then blow our circuit in that sense. And then similarly with our AC circuit, we got conduit piping um, that comes with the AC wires already within it. And so that's protected throughout the entire length of the wire. Um, and it really just gives us more ease of mind that throughout the years we're not going to uh, cut through our wires and put a short in the circuit. So that wraps it up for today. Um, thanks for watching. This probably is a long video, um, but I hope it's worth it for you. 
And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them as best as I can or direct you to some of the uh, resources I uh, used in my, in my research um, for planning this whole electrical system. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.